Uh, the best cover song, in my opinion, is clearly uh, Falling in Reverse's uh, Gangster's Paradise. You're disgusting him. No, it's awful. It's the worst <laughs> cover song that I could possibly ever see. The fact that they added in all of those screaming bits and the breakdown. There's even a bit where he remixes himself halfway through. And I'm just there like, oh, no, stop, please, my bones can't take it. But my actual answer is one that I actually forgot was a cover because it's become so ingrained in my mind. and that is the fact that it's a cover of the Kelly Clarkson song, Since You've Been Gone, done by Day to Remember, which is just phenomenal. It ticks all of the pop punk boxes. Yes, it does have a breakdown in as well. And yes, it's over the top, but it's one that you can just scream from the base of your lungs and it's so powerfully cheesy that it's brilliant. Like, I would never have thought that was a song that would get a cover let alone one that would be a pop punk slash like screamo cover. But at, at that time, a day to remember were at the top of their game, man. They were brilliant. So, so good. And I just really enjoyed it. And if it's on every week in Rise, the club that we all frequent here in Newcastle, I will, of course, be screaming to it. Of course I will. Were you not singing to Kelly Clarkson's version? No, surprisingly, that didn't cross past me at that time. I know I, I, I didn't I didn't know anything about Kelly Clarkson. It's exactly the same. I would hope that the entire song's the same. It's a cover. <laughs> That's not what a cover is. The song you has to be the same song. No, what's the point? No, but the song has to be not the same like musically. No, 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 but no, but it has to have the same lyrics in. Well, yeah, the lyrics can be fine. But you just said it had the same chorus. But it, yeah, the chorus is it, it, it's in it's sung the same way. Uh -huh. It's fine. It's fine. Uh -huh. It's fine. It's fine. First things first, sorry for how ill and disgusting I sound, but moving on, uh, the best cover song of all time technically is an album because it's Punk Goes Crunk, which is ooh, pure <laughs> gold. <laughs> Punk Goes Crunk is the, the best cover album to exist, but if we're talking specific songs, then I'm going to have to go with Tainted Love. Now, now. The OG version is considered to be Soft Cell with their lovely 1981 version. That's the one that gets talked about the most. But it was a cover of Gloria Jones's 1964-5 song that had loads of trumpets and like orchestral, not orchestral, but you know what I mean, like a band in the background making it big and happy and jivey and great. And her voice is fantastic on that. It's a, it's a great song. But Soft Cell took it, made it so painfully new romantic 80s that it just blew the world away and also me because I think it's great. Um, and it's a fantastic cover. It takes everything from the 60s, makes it incredibly 80s, and has all the fantastic synthy, uh, moany, like, man vocals, and makes it great. Uh, and then, and then, technically, a again, another best cover song of all time is still Tainted Love, but by Marilyn Manson in 2001, because that is a banger of a song. It takes it again, transforms it to 2000s, like gritty, like rocky version of it instead. So Tainted Love is the ultimate cover song that has taken us on a journey through the years and has remained good in whatever era it has cropped up in. I am waiting to hear it again for the whole mumble rap version in 2020. So there we go. Tainted Love, guys. It's got to be a musha ring, a musha roo, a musha ra. What are, what are the actual lyrics to it? Oh, it's whiskey ring, in the dama, jar. Do, dama, da. It's whiskey in the jar. Actually, I'm going to go with, obviously, Thin Lizzy's version is a cover as well, but Metallica's version just gets me, man. I feel like this old, uh, whenever it was, 1960s, I'm going to say, folk song really hit its peak with Metallica in the 90s. I believe it was on the Garage Inc. Yep. album. I get a feeling they just covered it thinking, I bet you we could cover Thin Lizzy's uh, whiskey in the jar and I bet you it would sound really good and then they ended up like it, it's this big like cover now it gets played at clubs now and I just love it so much and I'm so here for it in my opinion it is the best version of the song again not really pooping on Thin Lizzy's version because that is a very good boy as well but I just love Metallica and I love the whole um, the, the spin that Hetfield puts on the lyrics as well the whole um, <laughs> the jarro <laughs> well, you, you, can't, you can't miss the wah at the end you, you have to add the, the jarro um, no, I just I just love to sing along to it. I love pure belting it out at the top of my lungs. It is just the best cover. I haven't actually heard the original original version before Thin Lizzy picked it up. Um, so maybe this like whole entry is just like kind of cheating a little bit because technically I can't say it's the best cover because I haven't heard the original. Hey, the original doesn't have the wah. But the original doesn't have the wah, so <laughs> it's gotta be it's gotta be Metallica. It's gotta be gotta be whiskey in the jar. Andy Murray, Murray, Andy Murray, what is the best cover song? Best cover song of all time is The Sound of Silence by Disturbed. 
in opposite land, the actual <laughs> best cover song of all time is also the worst cover song of all time. If you know anything about me and my tastes and things, you know that I like music, films, anything to be either an 8 out of 10 or above, or a 2 out of 10 and below. I want anything in the middle. I don't want good, I don't want alright, I want terrible or brilliant. This song is both. The song I'm talking about is Limp Biscuit's cover of George Michael's Faith, which is an absolute abomination that makes no sense whatsoever. You take this lovely upbeat jamming old track, you heap a bunch of distortion and crap rapping over the top, and you get this. Fred Durst screaming, I gotta have five down the microphone gave me so much joy as a child, well, a teenager, gives me so much joy as an adult. It's the most ridiculous, preposterous, stupid thing I have ever heard, um, until Ash brought up Punk Goes Crunk, or Crunk Goes Punk, of course. But man, the, the major disappointment for me with this song has always been, I've always seen George Michael as a guy who doesn't really care, right? The guy who got, you know, caught having a bit of fun in a bathroom, and they made a goddamn song about it. Top banter, doesn't give a damn. But, sadden me deeply to learn that he heard this version, this Limp Biscuit version, which is objectively terrible, and decided that he hated the biscuit as a result. Terrible patter there, George, really bad. Blot on your copybook, but otherwise, Faith is a perfect cover, because it sucks. So there are so, so, so many covers in this beautiful world. Uh, I obviously wanted to say Twist and Shout by the Beatles, but I'm not going to say that because I said that last week. And then I also wanted to say like Stevie Wonders, We Can Work It Out, Earth, Wind and Fires, uh, Got To Get You Into My Life, both Beatle covers. But I'm not talking about the Beatles today. I am going to talk about Amy Winehouse with the cover of Valerie, uh, originally by the Zootons. It was released in 2007, I want to say. And uh, what Matt Ronson did with that track I don't know, it's, it, I would say it's one of my favourite songs of all time. It's just a beautiful, I want to say it's bluesy, soul, jazz, everything, London scene music. It's just a nice song. And uh, even the instrumental is beautiful with all the trumpets and the horn sections and everything. It's just a nice song. But her voice is just stunning. And like, obviously it's a shame what happened to her, but like what the legacy she left is unbelievable and I like to think that that song is like the pinnacle of what she did. She had the Back to Black album with Rehab, uh, Back to Black and all that stuff but what she did with Valerie is just a stunning song and for some reason it's just stuck out for me as the best cover of all time. The thing is I wanted something, I would, I'd scoured Google for the longest time and I thought is it The Clash, is it Jimi Hendrix and all that kind of thing. I'm just going to go with Metallica. I know Rage went with Whiskey in the Jar but they've got even better ones than that you see because they did a whole double album called The Garage thing, Garage Inc, whatever it was called, bunch of different songs. So first up, I'm going to say Astronomy, their cover of Blue Oyster Cult song. Um, I, I don't think that Metallica get enough due in the modern day for just actually playing extremely well and being able to bring more body to a song and being able to elevate a certain song, a certain energy within a song. If you go back to the Garage Inc, that is easily the best covers album ever made. Like the amount of different ways that they approach those songs. Something like Whiskey in the Jar it gives it a completely different feel overall. Um, with Astronomy as well, it's this big epic, like big long extended guitar solo at the end, Kirk Hammett just riffing his absolute nips off and I love it. Um, it's brilliant. So I would throw that up as, as one of them. Um, there's something that they do better than anyone else as well, which is combine a, multiple songs from other artists into one big medley. Um, they used to do it a lot live and then they started recording it a bit. Um, so there's one that's on um, Garage Inc called Merciful Fate, which is a whole bunch of different songs um, from like King Diamond and Diamond Head and, and old school stuff from him. Um, put together into like, it's like five different songs into one thing. And I love the way that they um, frame that whole song, the way that they transition between the different, they use different riffs and different drum fills and whatever to go between these different songs to make it one big powerful composition. And um, they did the same thing on the Ronnie Rising uh, tribute album, which was to Ronnie James Dio, and um, where they took a whole bunch of different Dio songs, whether it be Sabbath Rainbow or whatever, and they put them all together into this other brilliant, it's like this 10 minute long composition. And they just play their asses off. Like Lars Ulrich gets so much shtick for not being this amazing, perfect drummer or whatever. Um, I don't agree with that at all and I've always stood by him, um, probably I don't play drums, but I think that in that case, um, you know, when they're on it and they need to be on it, when they know they're being recorded, something like the s 2, the recent tour, uh, or the recent gig, uh, when they're on something like the Ronnie Rising thing, when they need to pull it out the bag, they can, and there's no one better than an on-form Metallica. They're absolutely, absolutely awesome. Didn't swear because it's YouTube. 
And uh, something like the Ronnie Rising thing, I totally recommend that medley. If you haven't checked it out, it's just them playing like their old school selves, like the sort of the tightness of the solos, the way that Kirk Hammett's newer stuff has got a lot more free form and kind of messy. But if you go to something like the Ronnie Rising thing, um, it's literally, they, that could easily be on the Garage album, which as I said, in itself is this immaculate collection of covers. Um, so I might just say it's all of the Garage Inc album. Um, but if I had to separate it out, it's astronomy. That would be my shout from the Garage album. And then, uh, yeah, the Ronnie Rising and Merciful Fate. They're all absolute slammers, James Styles. Absolute Absolute slappers. Well, before we started doing these music chatty faces, I made a promise to myself that I'd try to avoid repeating the same artists and the same songs over and over again. But when you come at me with a question about the best cover songs, how can I not mention Johnny Cash's Hurt? Because that is objectively the correct answer, I think. It came out in 2002, about a year before he died. Obviously, the original was a Nine Inch Nails song, which is pretty good, but I feel like Johnny Cash's version is so stripped back and so emotional and straight to the point that I think for me, it is better than that original. I can see Jules doing a thing with his face. You know, the one where he's sort of like, ooh, ooh, like he's being shot. Explain. I, it's a great, great song, but just to say that the Nail Nine Inch Nails one was all right was, uh, ooh, got me a bit bad now. Well, this is the thing. I don't know whether it's because I heard the, um, I heard the Johnny Cash version first or whether, you know, maybe that's just sort of, it's so good and so definitive that when I came to the Nine Inch Nails version, when I went and listened to that, it just sort of didn't have the same spark. I associated it too much with Johnny Cash. And I do think that's um, a testament to, you know, how powerful his version of the song is because across his career, he's done so many different cover songs. The last sort of few years of um, his music career was kind of just spent making albums that were really good and distinct, but were using a lot of other people's songs and kind of retooling them. And a lot of those are really great, but none of them sort of supplanted the original for me in the same way that Hurt did, because it's just such a great send off to sort of his entire kind of life and accompanied with the music video, which is so emotional and goes throughout the entirety of sort of his history. It has clips from his movies, it has clips from some of his older uh, live performances. It just sort of comes together to create this kind of emotionally sort of harrowing yet kind of at the heart of it, kind of hopeful sort of send off for him and his family and that kind of style of music. And it's, it's, it's it still gets me.